Everybody said, The Lord bless you and increase you, lift you up, make you like the person we're studying about tonight. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for the people you reserve for us to look up to, to learn from, and to glean the grace and the godliness and the growth and the power, the strength, the progress in their lives. You did it for them, and you did it through them. We present ourselves before you, every brother, every sister, every leader, Lord, I pray your grace will multiply in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Genesis chapter 37. And we're looking at verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. We're looking at Joseph. We're looking at his dream. We're looking at the importance of having a dream, a goal, a destiny, a place you want to get to. And we're looking at Joseph tonight not just because of the story and the history. We want to see our own Josephs, our children, our youths, our campus students, and the young adults. How can we make a Joseph out of every youth, every young person, that is given to us to care for and to minister to. How can we make a Joseph out of your own son, out of your own daughter? How can we make a Joseph out of those who are growing up and we have the privilege of contributing to their lives? That's what we are looking at. The topic tonight is the making of Joseph's out of today's jolted, jaded juveniles. Our young people, juveniles, jaded, disappointed, jolted because of the actions of people and the experience and the influence of people around them. How can we, in the hands of God, mold them, mentor them, monitor them, help them to be who God wants them to be. And if we look at all the young people in our church, in our ministry, and we go a little bit beyond and look at all the young people around us in our community, how can we provide a Joseph for the nation, a Joseph for every state, a Joseph for every locality. That's what Joseph became, the making of Joseph's out of today's jolted, jaded juveniles. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the dream of a Joseph destined for the throne. If anybody is going to get to the throne, going to get to the peak, he must have a dream, a vision, something that God paints in the heart and tells him, tells her, Joseph, Josephine, that is the place I've ordained for you. I want you to make your studies, your character, your lifestyle, your friends, everybody around you, lead you and move you on to that place I want for you. Number two, the dutifulness of every Joseph driving to the top. Anyone that makes anything in any profession, whether it is on the whole of Egypt as a prime minister 
or a chase a CEO of a particular company or a principal or a director. Anyone that gets to the top must have a driver from within. The person does not have any driver who is dead and dull and dormant and does not have anything to push him on. There is nothing he will make in life. We want to give drive to the young people who are living with us and who come to our church, whether they are biological children of ours or their spiritual children, the dutifulness of every Joseph driving to the top. Number three, the destination of excelling Josephs devoted to triumph. They have something they are dedicated to. Normally, young people are dedicated to something. They might be dedicated to games. They might be dedicated to just whatever hobby they have. They might even be dedicated to a toy, something that is a toy that will not get them anywhere in life. But that's their dedication. We need to reorientate our young people and help them to have that destination in mind that they will excel. Your own children will excel. And the young people that are with us in our churches, they will excel in Jesus' name. The destination of excelling Joseph's devoted to triumph. Number one, the dream of a Joseph destined for the throne. We're coming to Genesis chapter 35. And we we'll look at 37 verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told each his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. Now, when you have a dream, when you have a vision, when you have a destination, when you have a plan, you have a goal. If you keep it to yourself, Nobody will take you to account. If you have a dream and you keep quiet and you bury it and you hide it, if you fail, you are the only one that knows you have failed. If you are lazy, if you are diverted, if you are distracted, if you are not following through on your dream, nobody will challenge you because they didn't know. It's very important. When you have a dream, tell it to the people around you. Not the people that will kill the dream, the people that will destroy the dream. Tell it to the closest friend. Tell it, important now, to the people who have also achieved something. If you are a worker, for example, and as a CEO, is uh, you know, a person is on the go. It's a go-getter. If you have a dream, that person already knows how to get there. He's already doing something that is like achieving a dream. Tell him. Tell her. And they will tell you, if you are really serious about that, these are the steps that will get you there. Now, Joseph had to tell the dream. Now, look at these three things. Here. Number one, possessing a God-given dream to live for. Even as adults, you must possess a dream, a goal, an event, something to live for. Possessing a God-given dream to live for. Number two, pursuing a God-guided destiny to look up to. A God-guided destiny to look up to. That is why if anything comes your way, that you have to do this, put money into that, put time into that, put effort into that, you say, give me some time. As they give you some time, you look at those things they tell you to put your life into. Is this a God-guided destiny? Will it lead me to the dream and the destiny the Lord has showed me? That's the thing you look up to every time. Number three, preserving God's 
ungoverned desires. Your desires, desires come and they fly almost everywhere. But you must be so surrendered to God that God will govern the desires you have and God will help you to sit. Remove that one. That one will not get you to the dream I'm painting in your heart. Add that one. Go this, add this skill. Add this opportunity. Yes, that friend, you need him. I'm sending that friend to you. That co-worker, I'm sending that person to you because I govern the desires. I govern the destinies. Now, number three is the preservation of God's governed desires to labor for. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at possessing a God-given dream to live for. Already we know the story of, um, of uh, Joseph. It was God that gave him the dream. Let's look at Job chapter 33. And I'm reading from verse 14. God speaketh once. Yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In the case of Joseph, God gave him the first dream. He spoke once. And then he gave him the second dream. And he spoke the second time. And Joseph perceived it. And Jacob, the father, perceived it. And the brethren perceived it. God as given the dream but you remember pharaoh had one dream and he had the second dream he did not perceive he did not understand we must understand we must possess we must perceive the dream the lord is giving us that's how we live for that dream you remember nebuchadnezzar he had a dream and he had another dream he did not perceive he called on the magicians on the astrologers and he said what does this mean until daniel came we must endeavor something is coming to your mind an idea to start this, to start that, to plant that, to found a school, and to develop that school, and to put all your income on something at this time, at this age of your life. Look at that. God has spoken once. Yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Look at verse 15. It says, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. And in verse 16, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions. He opened their ears. He says, now, you've been traveling through life. What have you got? Where are you now? Do you know the purpose I created you and the purpose I brought you into the kingdom at such a time like this? No, no, to God are all his works from the beginning of the world. The heavenly father saw the condition of Egypt long before it happened. The heavenly father saw the need of a prime minister and the need of a leader long before uh, Joseph knew anything about Egypt and you look at your life what's God preparing you for we look at our children we look at our youth what's God preparing them for now as our Joseph's and our youths are uh, mixing with all the other young people they do bad things they come to report to the father and then and, uh, you know, they hit him, they push him away, don't play with us. You know, we look at all our Josephs are just ordinary people like that. We push them, we pull them, we drag them and all that. But every Joseph is important in the sight of the Lord. Every boy, every girl, I need your amen. amen. Your own boy. Amen. Your own girl. Our Josephs, everyone important in the sight of the Lord in Jesus' name. 
And when your son, when your daughter says, Daddy, mommy, or teacher, instructor, helper, mentor, this is what I'm going to do in life, don't say, where did you get that? How could you do that? That one is not important. I want you to be a doctor. If everybody in the world were a doctor, where would, where would the patients be? I want you to be an engineer. I want you to be a lawyer. Uh -uh. Don't impose any dream, any goal on them. Let God open their ears, open their mind, and give them the dream. That dream will take them to the throne. Look at Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, where there is no goal, where there is no dream, where we live a so so life, or live a life, a mediocre life, a superficial life. There is nothing to live for, there is nothing to labor for, there is nothing to look up to because of that. Our lives will be ordinary. The lives of our Josephs in our church, of our young people in our church, of our boys, of our girls will not be ordinary in Jesus' name. And look at Acts chapter 26 and verse 19. It says, Whereupon, no King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Saul, who became Paul, he was living in a religious life. No goal. He didn't know what the Lord had for him. In fact, he was fighting the dream. He was fighting the destiny. He was fighting Christ and the uh, Christianity that Christ has brought. What he will become the spearhead leader for, he was fighting that because he was ignorant. I pray our young people will not fight their destiny. They will not fight their dream. They will know that God is raising them up at such a time like this that God gives them a dream to live for. It says, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Then in verse 20, it says, But I should force unto them at Damascus, at Jerusalem, and, and throw out all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. We possess, number one, a God-given dream to live for. Number two now, number two, pursuing a God-guided destiny to look up to. Pursuing is like you're walking on a road. Now, there are many roads that lead to many places, and you cannot say, I'm going to take this road. You need to ask the question, answer the question, where am I going? It is where you are going that determines the road you take. You know, as we're here, many here tonight, when we finish, we'll be going there, going there, going here. And all those places we're going, they symbolize our destination in life. And I cannot say, because you are my friend, because we're in fellowship together, I take the road you are taking. No, because we're friends, but our destinations are different. We're brothers and sisters together, but our destinies are different. What destiny has God ordained for you that you will get to, that will determine the past, and the road that you take. Are you going to study this subject that depends on the destiny? Are you going to concentrate on this plan of action that will, de that will be determined by the destiny? Where am I going? 
that determines the road that determines my pursuit have you ever thought about it you wake up in the morning and you act and you walk and you move and you pay this and you pay that and you discipline yourself and i'm asking my brother my sister that path you are taking a great part that determines that demands discipline what is your intention where are you going it is the god guided destiny that determines the pursuit and what you look up to look at uh, psalm 27 reading from verse 4 one thing have i desired of the lord and that will I seek after. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. I'm sure you know people who will start this project, and then after about six months, they're not interested again. And then they start another one. After about three months, they're not interested again. And I say, my brother, my sister, what's the matter? I easily lose interest. And when I meet some obstacles in the way, I give up. And when it appears that, you know, I, I need people to encourage me and to support me. And when they are not encouraging me and supporting me, I give up. You know what? You didn't have or you didn't think about a God-guided destiny, you will understand that in the path of every Joseph, there'll be opposition, there'll be persecution, there'll be adversity, there will be things he didn't factor into all that will happen. They will be strange. You will meet strange people, even his family members, some of them, Reuben, Judah, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, some of them in conspiracy, they will look strange. But what keeps the man, what keeps our child, what keeps our boy, our girl focused is that there is a God-guided destiny. Yes, I know this is tough. And I know that if you cannot bear the heat of the kitchen, you'll never cook good food. You might know about the ingredients. You might have good uh, things, uh, you know, in the kitchen there to prepare the food. You might have something great ahead. And you're going to even feed presidents and highly placed people. But you will go through the heat of that process of cooking. And so, because Joseph knew that he had a God-guided destiny, and because you know you have a God-guided destiny, you do not allow the difficulty of one day, the misunderstanding, misapprehension, misinterpretation of your intention, and the hatred of the people to jolt you, you keep on moving. I'm talking to somebody there. You will get there because the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. The journey of a thousand miles, look at how far, yet it starts with a single step. And once you know God is guiding me, is the one that gave the dream, and my path is being led in the right direction, you will get there in Jesus' name. But one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Let that be your principle. If I were to be your personal coach, forget pastor, teacher, whatever, let's use another word now, coach. And I say, what's your goal? What's your dream? What's the peak you are aiming for? What do you want the people in the world that know you to write 
on your epitaph when you die eventually or when the rapture takes place and the angels receive you that's better the angels will receive you yeah. what do you want said about you that is your destiny now if i'm to coach you then i will say don't look at them reuben don't look at them judah don't look at them simeon look at me here your coach whatever they say they may not clap for you now they may jeer at you they may kind of view you they might uh, you know downplay you who are you by the way i say don't look at that let me coach you take this step move this way and pursue that destiny praise god you'll get there yeah. philippians chapter 3 i'm looking at verse 12 in philippians chapter 3 verse 12 not as though i had already attained not as though i'd already attained come back to joseph joseph you love your father yes i do and you love to be in at home with your father yes i do and you love the comfort of the home yes i do you know, Joseph, as long as you remain in that comfort zone, the comfort of the family, the comfort of the care, the comfort of the affection, and the comfort of the many colored clothes that you wear, you will never move to the place you are going. You see the path? To the place we're destined for is not a place that we're used to. It's not a place that is comfortable. But when we come out of that comfort zone and then we have some shaking and some movement and some winds that blow is getting you nearer and nearer your destiny in Jesus' name. Not as though I had already attained either were already perfect but i follow after i follow after a new day opens i follow after a new challenge comes i follow after a new opportunity comes and i don't say i've never done that before i feel some discomfort when i'm doing something new and i feel awkward that's what will get you there everybody whenever we begin to do something we never did before we feel awkward we feel some discomfort that shouldn't stop us it will not stop you i said it will not stop you but i follow after if that i may apprehend that for which also i am apprehended of christ look at verse 13 in verse 13 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do jack of all trades master of none but this one thing i do i dream about it i think about it i plan for it and i set my face like a flint towards that thing this one thing i do they criticize they condemn the bad mouth whatever they do they slander this one thing i do and whatever comes the wind is blowing and the waves are rising this one thing i do that my brother my sister is what gets us to the place we ought to be and remember now our josephs our young people we must have the ability if we're training young people if we're coaching young people to always redirect their attention to this one thing they ought to do many things will happen in a teenager's life a new interest a boy to a girl a girl to a boy and then that you almost sees their learning ability that they don't want to do any other thing now 
they've got a new friend either directly or they get that online but as the coach as the trainer as the instructor as their leader we know how to reorientate them and bring them to this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before then in verse 14 it says I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus if there's anything that matters uh, we, we talk of uh, when we're talking to young people we talk of IQ intelligence coaches but no matter how bright how great the brain is without perseverance do it and do it and do it again and press on without that pressing in times of discouragement in times of failure in times of non-achievement it is what makes joseph and any other person like joseph even you and i it is what makes us to succeed and you will succeed I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Press on. I said press on. If because of the winds that blow and the waves that rage, you have dropped something, something that will determine your destiny, go back there. It's still there. Pick it up. And now begin to press on. I will see you at the top. Yeah. Number three here, number three is preserving God governed desires to labor for. Preserving God governed desires to labor for. And look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. The point will come in your life. You'll be able to say, I am what I am. I didn't hear you. The dreamer has come to the fulfillment of the dream. Let's picture our Joseph now. Our Joseph has gone through Potiphar's house. Our Joseph has gone through temptation and trial. Our Joseph has gone through the prison period. Joseph, I'm sure you know, keep on moving. Identify where you are now. Compare what you, where you are now with the dream you had in chapter 37 from verse 5 to verse 11. And if where you are now does not compare with that dream, keep on moving. I said keep on moving. If what the Lord had revealed to you, the desire that he planted in your heart, as you compare those desires with where you are now, and you see that, well, I'm making it in a little way. I'm getting something, but this is not your final bus stop. Don't get down from the bus before you reach your destination. This person got down. That's, that's where I wanted to go. Another one got down. That's where he wanted to go. You're not looking at the people that are getting down from the bus. You're looking at your destination. Are you moving? Are you going there? And until you get there, and you can say, I am what I am, you'll get there. Yeah. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. The dream given unto you will not be in vain. The sharing of the Lord from heaven with your heart will not be in vain. But I labored 
I labored, I labored more abundantly than they all. Now, Paul, why didn't you look at other people and see that this is how they labor and moderate your own labor? We have different dreams. We have different destinations. We have different vision. We have different calling. There is apostle and there is apostle. There are apostles and then this is their limit. And once they have all that crowd, thousands in Jerusalem, that apostle, that's his vision. That there is another one, an apostle. And he is not just for Jerusalem. It's not just for uh, Israel. It's not just for the kings. It's not just for the Gentiles. It's even for Rome at the capital. And it's going to get to the people that are decision makers all over the world. That makes the man to keep on moving on and when you know what the Lord has called you for and what the Lord has called your family for you will move on tonight no more discouragement no more diversion no more tiredness tonight in Jesus name but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Let's come to num uh, point number two here. Point number two, the dutifulness of every Joseph driving to the top. We're looking at Genesis chapter 39, reading from verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord will be with you. The Lord will be with our children. All our Josephs or Josephine, all our Marys, and all our victorious victors, the Lord will be with them. He will not forsake our children. He will not forsake your children. He will open their eyes to where he has ordained for them in life in Jesus' name. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. Your son, your daughter, our youths, he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Think about that. He was a servant in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Very soon, he would leave that position of the servant in the house of an Egyptian. He will become not the servant. He will become the leader, the head, the CEO, the prime minister of the whole nation of Egypt. Don't despise the day of small beginning start there servant start there slave start there menial worker start there primary school teacher start there secondary school teacher start there nurse start there or maybe a foreman not fully an engineer now start there that is the beginning that is not the end I need a good amen. amen. Now, we're looking at this, the dutifulness of every Joseph driving to the top. Three things there. Number one, the principle and, and pattern of Joseph's prosperity. Number two, the pain and progress to justified 
prosperity. Number three, the possibility and prevention of joyless prosperity. Let's look at number one here. Number one, we're looking at the principle and pattern of Joseph's prosperity. We're coming to Genesis chapter 39, verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. All that he did. We never prosper in what we don't do. We can only prosper in the things that we do. If we say, that's small, that's below my dignity, and I'm waiting for something higher, we will not prosper in what we don't do. If we are absentees, if we're always afraid to go to work, if we're afraid to meet the people at work, if we're afraid to meet the personalities that interact with us, they are fast, I am slow. They are boisterous, I am a research person. They are extroverts, I am an introvert. They are experienced, I am inexperienced. They are not um, favorable to my running fast. I want to hide myself. I don't want to take any risk. You will not prosper in what you don't do. It is what you do that you prosper in. And so ask yourself as you wake up in the morning, what am I going to do today? Because God can only uh, multiply the seed I sow. I must sow. The place I go, I must go there. The things I do, I must do it. The lessons I teach as a teacher, I must teach it. And the, and the skill that I climb, you must do it. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand look at uh, verse 4 there in verse 4 and joseph found grace in his sight the gift of a man will make way for him but it is the gift that is used if the gift is hidden and the gift is dormant and the gift is not put to profitable use they will not know what you can contribute it is when it was when the master knew that joseph contributed to the progress of his business that's when joseph found grace in his sight now i want promotion i'm in a place of work and in that place of work there are many other workers too and they are working to rule and they are working to you know they're not going to finish all the work in one day and then you queue behind them and you do like they're doing they will not see what you contribute to that company. And then you'll not find the grace for the promotion you're looking for. It is when you forget yourself, you forget the reward, you forget the reaction of other people, and you're sinking everything you've got, then they will notice you. It is your activity that makes you to be noticed. It is your action that makes you to be noticed. It is what you give, it is what you contribute that makes you to be noticed. And so we're told that Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had, he had put into his hand. Let's remember that Joseph was a stranger. He was a foreigner. 
He might even have to learn the language of the Egyptians. That wasn't his own normal, natural language. Let's remember his father was not there. Mother was not there. Let's remember the people who could recommend him and the people that were called contacts, they were not there. He was there alone, but he used his gift, his skill, profitably and therefore he was noticed you will be noticed Amen. your children will be noticed Amen. and they will shine and become stars in Jesus name Amen. because they contribute practically positively to the people and to the companies anywhere they are and then in verse 5, it says, And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. For, Jacob, for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. House and field. House and field. Now, Joseph was given the privilege of overseeing the house. And everything prospered. And then he was given the privilege of overseeing what the man had on the field. Now Joseph could have said, I'm not the only servant. I'm not the only person. Why should I do this one here and do this one here? And they're using me like rain water. And because I am available, they dump everything on me. No, Joseph did not say that. I don't know whether Joseph understood. The Lord was training him for being a prime minister. It wasn't, that wasn't going to be the final place. The Lord was training him on administration, on organization, on planning on strategy, on people management, that when eventually he gets to that place, all that he had learned on the field, in the house, all the organization, everything will come to play. The Lord is preparing you for the future. The Lord is preparing our Josephs, our boys, our girls for the future. And you know, sometimes we who are their leaders can restrict their experience. Okay, join the youth choir. That's all. Don't do any other thing. Music is vast. Therefore, dig deep into that and perfect that. Why do we limit him? Why do we limit her? You be a Bible study leader at the, in the school and concentrate on that just that what do we limit him what do we limit her and then be this and be that in the case of joseph he was exposed our josephs will be exposed look at ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4 ecclesiastes 11 verse 4 he that observes the wind shall not sow and he that regarded the clouds shall not reap something you learn from joseph he didn't see any challenge any difficulty language difficulty he didn't see that a foreigner a stranger he didn't see that the people love him they don't love him he didn't see that after all my own brothers of the same father they showed hatred so What's my problem if a stranger that I never knew will show some dislike? He didn't look at that. Sometimes what hinders even us adults and then our children in particular is acceptance or rejection. 
I'm rejected. They don't want me in the group. They don't want me in the team. Have I been rejected? God sent me there. I must take my neck out there. I must keep on plowing. I must keep on sowing. I will not look at the cloud. I will not look at the climate. And you will make it. Now, ask yourself, are you a person that easily withdraws? You, you are very sensitive. Here is where you are walking. Here is what, even in the church, and then you watch people, do they accept me? Do they reject me? Are they saying I'm brother to you know? Are they saying I am sister to you know? Do they give me a kind of cold reception? Okay, he has come. Okay, you want to take over everything? All right, we're hands off. Mr. Know-all, Madam Know-all has come and then you have put up, say, no, I didn't mean to, what, what are you saying? You mean to climb and you will climb in Jesus' name. I didn't mean to come forward, why not? I didn't come to prove anything, why not? If you've got something, come out and make yourself available and the acceptance will come later. They might reject you now. They might look down on you now. But you cannot drown a dreamer. Any dreamer in the house here today, nothing will drown you in Jesus' name. If you observe the wind and if you observe the clouds, you will not sow. But you'll keep on sowing. I will keep on sowing. Look at number two there. Number two there, the past and the progress to justify prosperity. Look at Proverbs chapter 24, verse 27. In Proverbs 24, verse 27, prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field afterwards build thine house anything we're going to do that will attract success progress prosperity must have a plan there are you know many people many office workers they go to the office in the morning and when they get there, it's when they know what will be done. What's on my table? What's on her table? And then they deal with that. Then they close the day. The day is over. And they don't think now. In connection with what I've done today, what am I supposed to do tomorrow? Is there any connection, any link between yesterday and today, between today and tomorrow? For them, there's no connection. We must plan. And then before you get to the office, you must at home, after you've done your quiet time, your devotion, what am I doing today? Where did I stop yesterday? And what will I do today that will move me forward in the achievement of the goal, the dream, the destiny I have? That's how to work. That's why it says you prepare the work without. Before you get to where the activity will take place, the office work will be done. Before you sit at your desk, you prepare the work outside that place and while you are going you already know where you are going what you are going to do and what you are going to achieve and then it says make it fit for thyself make it fit you see the work we do has to fit our personality has to fit our skill has to feed our training. Otherwise, you'll be a square peg in a round hole. But if you plan it 
and you know where you're coming from and you know your skill and you know your training and then you feed into that if you are not fit for that at present you've not lost anything ask yourself what do i need to learn that will help me to fit into this position what do i need to get more of what I have got that will make me fit for this work. Make it fit for thyself in the field when you eventually get to the field and afterwards build thine house. Can you build the house without a picture of the house first? A catering drawing of the house first and looking at what it will look like after the house is finished you need to see that see the edge of that house being built before you even lay the first block that's what he's saying and that applies to everything in our lives that whatever you are going to do there's a good plan prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field afterwards build thine house then in ecclesiastes chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 10 ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 what's Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, don't be so selective and choosy. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. that one demands sweat. I cannot do that. That one demands uh, bearing the heat of the day. I cannot do that. That one thongs will prick my hand. I cannot do that. What are you going to do then? Now, anything you are called to do anything you see that's available for you to do check up you'll find there are people before us that have done those things and through that they have earned their own prosperity whatever it is whatever it is all of us cannot be in one kind of job all through our lives but whatever it is whatsoever thy hand find it to do do it with thy might. Put all your energy and all your mind and all your courage and all your determination, diligence into it. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Let's look at number three here. Number three, the possibility and prevention of joyless prosperity. What's joyless prosperity? That means a prosperity you don't enjoy, a success you don't enjoy. You have material things, but then there is a sorrowful heart, a guilty heart, a condemned heart. You've gone through that. You have material success and prosperity, but you don't have a mind of peace and rest and joy. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 9, there is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness? And sin against God. What's Joseph saying? Joseph is saying, God, there is sin for my prosperity. God, the source of my prosperity. God, the channel of my prosperity. Is my fellowship with God that makes him to bless all that I do. It's not my intelligence. It's not my power. It's not my skill. Now, what you are inviting me to do, if I do that and sin against God and separate God from me and lose the favor and the grace and the help of God, what will happen to me? If I'm left alone in this strange land, no father here, no mother here, no brother, no sister here, no helper here, I don't know anybody here. 
except Potiphar and yourself and the people in this house walking for Potiphar and then I have God that's what had been the confidence of my life if I do this and I sin against God and he abandons me the prosperity will look like charcoal in my mouth. It will be as if I'm eating ashes. And so I cannot do that because the possibility is there to have prosperity without peace of mind, without purity of heart, and without the passion to live that God gives me. Let's be very watchful in our prosperity, in our progress, that we do not allow anything to come in that will steal away our joy. It tells us in Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 36. Mark chapter 8, verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul the prosperity we have here joseph was meditating is only for this life maybe 70 years maybe even 100 years but on the other side if i have 100 year prosperity and then i have a million years of sorrow and suffering and crying that hundred years of prosperity will fizzle off into nothing for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul then in verse 37 or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul you will not lose your soul happy here you'll be happy in eternity yeah. accepted by the lord here you'll be accepted by the lord in eternity prospered here your soul also will prosper yeah. let's come to point number three point number three the destination of excelling joseph's devoted to triumph our joseph's let's remember our children, let's remember, we need to tell them that what you are dedicated to, that is where you succeed. What you are giving to, you give your time, you give your skill, you give your brain. What you dedicate your brain, your mind to, that's where you excel. Now, the brain needs care the brain needs to be understood the brain is like your body let me explain if you make your body drive here drive here go down go up and all that the body will be weakened and the body will not know okay tell me which direction is the most important so we can concentrate because you're tearing me apart your brain is like that and the brain of our young people that's how it is that if their brain is pulled here their brain is pulled here their brain is you know affected affected here the brain then does not know the brain is confused what are we doing here what are we concentrating on that's why you know our children should understand when we say that um, they shouldn't uh, go into marijuana into hard drugs into alcohol into illicit kind of affection we're trying to tell them that the brain cannot cope with diverse directions and those things will scatter the direction of their brain. The brain of everyone is good enough to achieve. If we give that brain concentration and it goes in the right direction, I pray for our Josephs, I pray for our Marys, I pray for all our children. They will go in the direction and they will prosper in Jesus' name. 
they will excel you know the same thing have you noticed those of us who are adults i want to do something i'm wired up and i want to get that thing done and i'm already at the steering of my life and i, I, I said the speedometer of my life how fast i will go and the direction i will go and i'm now set. i want to move and get there and then another interest gets into my brain another desire gets into my mind another pull comes into my life then all those uh, things that have gathered up the energy and the vision and the willingness and the readiness all those things will just scatter and they're on the ground and i'm confused what do i do now and then i have to begin to regather again if that happens to us as adults how about our children let our children be focused and our children will rule this land yeah. and don't you know begin to tell them they should joseph had not been schooled at home you cannot be a prime minister our family our religion our tradition our calling does not allow being a leader in a nation they didn't tell him that don't set any limit for your children leave them in the hands of god where god wants them to be it might not be something you ever dreamt about Jacob the father never dreamt even with all the dreams that um, Joseph told him he never dreamt that that Joseph his own son will be a father to Pharaoh will be the leader of the whole of Egypt and will be the one that is sustaining the whole of Egypt and other nations and distributing food to them and sustaining their life. What you have never thought of, where you have never thought of, your children will get there. But you know, if you are telling them, our youth leaders, if you are telling them, we cannot do that, we cannot do that, we cannot go there, we cannot achieve that, we so cut them down. Now, if you plant, a tree and every time every week when you have meeting with that tree you cut the branches you cut the roots the next week when you come again you cut the branches you cut the roots will that tree ever grow to the full stature let our children grow to their full potential your children our youths they will grow to their potentials in Jesus' name. Very quickly, very quickly, three things here. Number one, a life of holiness without hatred. Number two is look at the highest without hiding. Number three, the law for helpfulness without hopelessness. Let's come to number one, a life of holiness without Hatred. Look at um, Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and Israel the father said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in shaking calm, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here I am. I'm here, I'm available. You know, he didn't have hatred, no hatred. He knew they hated him, but he didn't have hatred. Now, he was going to be the ruler over them. He was going to feed them and feed their families. He was going to sustain their lives. Now, God is going to promote you above all the people that hate you. 
and their, their lives will depend on what you have to offer. That's why you are not praying for them to die. That's why you are not hating them back. You maintain holiness without hatred. Let's come to number two. Number two is, is look at the highest without hiding. It's, it was looking at the highest. It was saying, God is my maker. Not only my creator, he will make me what I will be. God is your maker. He will make you what you will be. You will get there. We will still be alive. For you, I want to be alive to see your progress. And I will see it in Jesus' name. Look at this. We're looking at Genesis 39 and we're reading from verse 7. It says, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and said, Lie with me. Look at verse 8. And but he refused. Why? He was looking at the highest, he was looking at God high. And you know, somebody who is at the highest can see all the people down below. He says, God is high and God is looking at me. And I know he is the one that controls the height I'm going to reach. I'm not going to be hypocritical. I'm not going to do anything and pretend that God cannot see. God sees everything. God knows everything. That consciousness, knowing that the devil may want to put a trap in my way, in your way, in our way, in Joseph's way, so that God will see something he doesn't like, and then he will abandon Joseph. And Joseph said, Satan will not win over my life. I thought you say it for yourself. <laughs> Satan will not win over your life. Yeah. Over Joseph's life. Yeah. I mean your own Joseph. Yeah. Satan will not win over your children in Jesus' name. Yeah. But he refused and said unto his master's wife. Now, I need to talk to our Josephs, our young people. Sometimes they say, my father is not a believer, my mother is not a believer, my brethren are not believers, and they're not praying for me. They don't even know how to pray. And since nobody is praying for me, if I fail, that is why I fail. My son, my daughter there, the father of Joseph was not praying for him to succeed. He thought he had died. Mother she had died and then uh, all the neighbors all the friends all the uh, brethren they were not praying for him they thrown him into slavery even if nobody is praying for you jesus is praying for you yeah. if friends are praying for us fine if a brethren are praying for us fine if we have a daddy a mommy praying for us fine if we don't like Joseph, we're still going to succeed. You are still going to succeed. Because he refused and he said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not, wotteth not, what is with me in the house. He has committed all that he has into my hand and I will not betray his trust. In verse 9 it says there is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He was looking at the highest, and because of that, he will not do any shameful sin. Look at number three here. Number three, the love 
for helpfulness without hopelessness. We're coming to Genesis 39, verse 19. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife that she spake unto, her, unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant, um, did a, did a servant to me that his wrath was kindled his wrath was kindled remember that this man was a heathen a pagan and remember that joseph was a foreigner a stranger remember when he bought him he bought him as a slave and there was no contract reaching that, okay, I will deal well with him, I'll pay him this. He was just a slave. And in those days, if a slave did any criminal thing and the master felt, uh -uh, you are a slave and you did that, you'll just kill him off. Who is going to ask Potiphar? Where is Joseph? Well, Jacob asked. Jacob did not know where he was. The brethren did not know where he was. And the king or whoever, Pharaoh, did not know where he was. If he finished his life that, that, it was gone. But you cannot finish the life of a dreamer. Yeah. He was angry. You did that. He didn't even question. He just assumed that he, the boy, did that. But it threw him to the prison. Where they throw you to will be the stepping stone to the throne. It was there that he saw those other prisoners and interpreted their dreams for them. And then when the time came, that man recommended Joseph to Pharaoh to higher ground, to higher plane, and to become the prime minister. Do good. He was helpful. He wasn't hopeless. He wasn't thinking, I have my own problems. I'm sinking in my deluge of sorrow. And so, if those prisoners are also helpless, me too, I have my problem, not Joseph. He wasn't hopeless, and when he needed to help people, he helped them. You'll be a helper. I said you'll be a helper. Don't worry, don't, worry, don't, don't bother. The water that has gone under your bridge, don't worry about them where God is taking you to, you will get there. Yeah. I come back to our Josephs, our boys, our girls. Let's have high aim, high goal, high expectation for them. God created them. God brought them into this world and put them in your care. I pray that your care will lead your Joseph, your child, your son, our youth, to the place of enviable, excellent, extraordinary height in Jesus' name. Rise up and take to the Lord what you have learned today. Let's call on the name of the Lord. Let's thank him for everything we've heard and think in particular of our Josephs to lead them to where they ought to be.